The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, the 18th of July. We're looking at the Dow up 123. At 41,329. So tomorrow is Technical Friday, but I'm going to start the technicals today. And I'm also on my, probably I'll do my market overview, my all long overview um, tomorrow, Friday night, uh, Friday after the close, uh, because I want, to, I, I want us to be prepared. So if you're interested in my webinar, just sign up really quickly because I, we're not wasting time in getting our positions ready. I'm not waiting until the Tuesday afternoon a webinar to start putting on positions for this particular phase we're already doing it and it's important that you use the timing uh, appropriately and you can see when i talk about timing look the dow 30 and i think this represents the ideal and this is what i've been talking about for years and years and saying the dow 30 is not the dow in, in industrials anymore it's really a, a, an amalgam of the u.s economy uh, you've got, you know, you go from American Express, you've got Amgen, you know, Biotech, you've got uh, Boeing, you've got Apple. I mean, you're all over the show. You've got uh, CVX, you've got uh, Honeywell, Home Depot. I mean, you're everywhere. Intel, all of a sudden, look what happened. Intel, the semis are taking a huge breather, and Intel becomes a leader. It goes to the upside. I wouldn't call it a leader in the sense that it's going to take over. I'm just saying... In this particular phase over the last three, four days, Intel is the one that's been going to recovery highs, whereas the general market in the semiconductor area has been very weak and very weak yesterday. And I've been kind of negative on the semis for a while, uh, quite a while actually, even as it was going to highs. And I said, when it does have a breather, it's going to be very sharp, very sudden, and it's going to mean that they go out of favor for a little while, and that little while, we'll see just how long that little while is, uh, but most importantly, uh, there's this rotation going on through all these different sectors. For instance, look at this, um, uh, Hood, Robin Hood, was not the darling at all, and now all of a sudden, it's pushing to highs, and Schwab, Charles Schwab, the same sector, Look at that red candle. Look at even today, it's down again at 62. Going okay, from the 70 in one week, from the 75s down to the uh, 60 level, 61 area. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the bifurcation we've got, even within besides the sectors, but even within a sector itself. So that means this is a very uh, difficult time now. It's a lot. It's not as easy as it was. Remember, we were talking about. Microsoft, I have this pattern. I'll discuss the pattern in greater detail in my, uh, in my, uh, for my subscribers over the weekend and going into Tuesday, discussing for quite some time that Intel has a pattern that says that when the daily chart finally makes a peak and we pull back, <clears throat> there's a really good chance that the weekly chart that has this pattern that I drew in right here called the Chapman Wave Stalk Lake Formation, where there's a long move to the upside, then there's a, emphatically an oval pattern. It can't be anything else but an oval pattern. Then there's a neck, and then there's a beak. That's your, that's your stalk, right? Leg, oval body, neck, and long beak. And I say when the beak occurs, it's going to probably come back and it'll break the trend line, this arch moving, uh, this is this oval pattern, and in the oval pattern, 433.60 was the high of the 23rd of May, and the 431 area was this little double top here. And the area that I have as a target is in the 4, uh, 434 to 430 area for this particular move. We did not go short. It would have been really a very easy and a very nice way to do it. Could even have bought a put. But I just wanted to be separated. We've been long since 338. I still like it because the whole thing about the Chapman Wave Stork Lake formation this is a pattern that I discovered whew, way back when I was hand charting. Um, and 
basically what it says, and this I found out over years, all, almost all the techniques that I have, uh, the school of hard knocks before you finally get them right, um, and then you graduate school of hard knocks. Um, when the beak culminates, when it finally concludes, there's a very big rally off that low, and then you're on your own. And I said, let's just keep thinking this way, that we want to buy the dip when it finally um, evolves, and maybe it's somewhere in here. Who knows? I could have drawn it left side, right side, price, time, time match. I just didn't want to get too too involved in it. We, we were looking at the pattern folding, unfolding exactly as we drew it in. Let's see what happens. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's just run these numbers again. So the Dow right now is trading up 118 uh, still very strong. You know that when th that when we start to make a peak E, that's when we're going to have a digestive phase. But when you've come this far and this strong with the technicals confirming, you don't have to give back. You don't have to have an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down move. You could stall. And in fact, the whole 40,800 to 40,300 area could be very strong support in any pullback. Well, I have to wait for Friday to talk about the weekly chart. How it closes is going to be really important. And I got a little ping right here. And we have John in Philly. John, how are you? John, did I surprise you by getting to you so quickly that you didn't even have to wait? Hi, John. Uh -uh. <laughs> you have, you've turned over a new leaf. I uh, I commend you. <laughs> well, it's only one leaf. If it's if it's an onion or if it's a, if it's a lettuce leaf, could be quite a few. So, John, you'd like to look at what? I'd like to look at the Nasdaq futures NQU4, please. And I've got a very specific question. Once there, specific question away. I'd like to ask you if you pull up the 10-minute chart on that contract. Okay, give me one and, second. I'm going to change it right now. The NQ. And Basil, you, you were four. you've been the one who, and of course, I've been with you for <clears throat> quite a long period of time. But um, you were the one that educated uh, me, amongst all your many students and listeners, of the importance from time to time of the 200 exponential moving average. Now, Correct. Um, if you would, uh, I'd ask you, I'm, I'm in the Tiger's Den, also looking on Tiger TV so I can see that chart of yours. If you uh, open that up, there we go. Uh, I observe the, the bounces uh, today here, Thursday morning, 3 a.m. and then 9 a.m., have come up and gotten very close to that 200 exponential moving average on the 10 minute chart have not proceeded to exceed it, uh, but aren't falling off very hard either. So, my question right now is if, if buyers drive price up and over that moving average, uh, what does that say to you? Uh, secondarily, if you're focusing on trading this only, what do you do with that information? So, John, are you going to uh, go back into the tiger's den and I'll just talk about it? Or is that is that the question? Uh, I'll listen offline. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So there's a lot to discuss, and I'll be right back. John's question is a really good salient question pertinent to techniques that I have, and that will be pertaining to the NDX 100 futures. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back, and the Dow is up 154, s and is up 25, and with the uh, NQ, the uh, Nasdaq futures are trading up uh, 99. So John's question was pertaining to specifically this orange line right here, this two, thick orange line, 200-period exponential moving average, and it's in a 10-minute chart. It means that the look-back period, uh, 200 bars, uh, and we're talking about a 10-minute, and it goes back, of course, uh, forever. That's just the way these things are, uh, are, are notated. Most importantly, I'll just talk about this. There are three separate questions, John. Uh, even though it was one question, the implications have uh, numerous uh, um, spin-offs. So what we're looking at is the price of the NQ goes to 20162.50, at 3 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time. The 200-period moving average is way up at 20,225. And then what does it do? It rallies and fails, makes this dreaded H pattern at a peak B, and then breaks down and has a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, and it stops at a low of, at 6.20 this morning, a low of 20,018.50. Um, I know that well because that's when I started to look at the E-mini to see whether, whether there was even a chance of a two-click session today. So now what we're looking at is it then rallies. It goes to peak A, a B, and then a C. The C is underneath, I have to double-check, underneath the 20,162.50 high that was made at 3 a.m., and at uh, 9, 10 this morning goes to 20,162.50. So remember, what was the last one? 162.50. How prices know to go to exactly to the penny, in this case it trades in quarter points, to the penny, in this case quarter point, um, of the previous high, it's just it's it's a mystery. However, it's not a mystery if you do chapter wave methodology, and this is what I'll do. A little bit off, mostly I'm looking at for, for Tuesday. I'm already starting this coming tomorrow night. In fact, even today, we're starting to look at stocks and, and sectors that should be appropriate for the next few months to have really good rallies and what will be weak. Okay, so now what I'm looking at here in the QQQ is that there's a rally and if you do the, the number of bars on the left side from the high to the number of bars on the downside to the low, if you count exactly the number of bars back to that high, 
you'll see that we made it within two bars, three bars, sorry, three bars to that exact high. If it took it out, that would mean, imply that it should go to a D. But because it double topped in this exact cup formation, number of bars on the left equaled exactly the symmetry of the bars to the right, and then it pulled back. That says to me that there's weakness. Now, that, that's, that, that, that whole thing was question number one for me, based on the 10-minute chart and using Chapman Wave methodology. Number two is the question that John had, is the importance of the 200-period moving average. Look, I'm, gonna pull, I'm not going to pull it back too far. I'm going to pull it back way back. Uh, I'm going to pull it back to where it touched that line, and it touched that line and then held the line. That's how important this moving average is. Look how it could fail to break above it that whole period between 3 o'clock and uh, 4 o'clock on whatever day that was. Let's just say it was that day before yesterday. That was on the 16th. That was two days ago. So, and that at that point, that moving average was up at um, 20,600. Here it is declining. It's now a declining uh, moving average. And my rule of thumb is that at some point it gets closer and closer to that 200 period moving average. There's a moment when if it goes close enough, and I would say if it went just another 50 cents higher, it would have been close enough to have this magnet line go, clip. it would have grabbed the price and would have touched it at about 20,177 or something like that. But it didn't, instead it's been repelled. But that line is still a magnet line, and it's not. you cannot dismiss it because we have not broken <clears throat> to lower lows. If we go below um, 20,018.50, let's say if we go below, I'm going to give it a little room. If you go below 20,000, that 200 period moving average becomes a repellent and not a propellant. It doesn't retract, the, it pushes it away. So that's, there were two parts of the question. One was, what is the implication of the 200 period moving average. The other one was the one I picked up. I immediately saw that there was a cup formation and there was a beautiful symmetry between the number of bars on the left and the other on, on the right. And now the, the third one, the one that really was actually prime in my mind over the last couple of days, is that if you look at the QQQ, and I hadn't gotten to that in my analysis of the charts, that's why I thought how appropriate to have John ask about that. Let me show you something interesting here. Look at the pattern I drew, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I said there's an arch formation, and I'm anticipating, based on the left side, right side price time match, that there's a really good chance that the, that the uh, NQ, that is, uh, I've got this as the um, E-mini NASDAQ 100 continuous contract, at NQ is a symbol, is going to, the has the chain wave inside wedge, and I will talk about these a little bit. I won't have that much time, but I'll start talking about it over my, over the in the overview this weekend, um, and then I'll, I'll continue it on Tuesday. Is the number of bars on the left to the number of bars on the right, and the Chapman Wave inside wedge support line is called the target support line, or is target um, right here, right? It's a target. Repellent line because every time, sorry, a propellant line because every time it gets down there, it wants to bounce off it. If it takes that out, it goes straight down. The low that I'm anticipating by early next week is as uh, 19,811.75. That was the low of the first of July. So that's the way I'm looking at it. If there is a bounce and it can bounce anywhere into the 20,250s between now and tomorrow, then it stalls it and it says, yeah, it might take it a little while because that support line, that diagonal support line is working. Now, in my weekly charts, I have this as a C. If I go to the QQQ, this is the trading vehicle for the index 100, I have this in F slash B. I believe I'm calling it a B and you've got the same arch formation. In the monthly chart, yes, uh, peaking in the den, this is only leg C, and there should be higher highs to come, and it should go to at least a D in the year 2024. Let me just question, there we got that, okay, okay. So now what I've, I've done is I've outlined for you the, the met, how can I put this? I've outlined for you one factor 
in what I'm looking. I also want you, I hope I've got the chart uh, up because this is driving me nuts. Every time I go, it seems to have disappeared and I have to redo it. And in fact, now I'm drawing it, I'm typing in the wrong place. So let me just do this. I want to do the comp index as well because they are different. The index 100 is the top 100 based on certain criteria. And the comp index is a much broader, like 2,000 stocks. Uh, and that has got... I, this could be a G. I actually, I should, for all intents and purposes, I cannot rule that out. I have to consider that's a G slash B in the daily. Is this a brand new A in the week? The comp 2000 is fascinating to see. The comp 2000. Keep your eye on the middle chart. Keep your eye on the middle chart. Keep your eye on the middle chart. Let's go back again. Middle chart. Ah, well, I, I haven't got it right. C-O-M-P-X. There it is. Yeah, a little bit different. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kickstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
So a question is in about XLE. Yes, finally it broke that. Do you remember this down channel that I said? When it breaks that down channel, it goes very quickly to the previous left side peak. It's trying to get to the 95 area. It's trading in 94.03. It is a leg D, and there is a beautiful cup formation forming. Uh, I, I don't want to do this right now. There are, there are a lot of questions I have. Yes, it's looking very good. Most importantly, let me just say that the 92 to 91 area where it was just two, three days ago, that's now very good support. And the weekly chart is to start to improve only based on the fact that the nine period moving average, we've got to wait until tomorrow at four o'clock, but it has flipped back to L. That's long the uh, 914 moving averages. So, okay, so we did that. Now I, I didn't finish what I was doing before. So I, I, let me go back to gold. So gold is stalling at the level that we looked at, left side, right side, price, time match, the same technique I just discussed. It, it never went to the low. It was a little lopsided. It's called the gravy cup pattern. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, gold, you're doing well. Uh, it's very nice to see you up here. Silver is not as good. It was doing much better. Now it's kind of stalling. It's uh, up uh, 0 0.05 at 30.43. So it's in a digestive phase. And this is what I always say that you've got gold or silver lead. Then the other one quickly follows. Then the other one follows. And then the one turns around, especially it's usually silver goes very strongly, sharply higher. And then gold looks around and says, hey, wait a minute, wait for me. And then they both continue higher. And then they both come down together. I think we're very close to a little consolidation in the gold silver area. They're coming into maybe next week. I'm just talking about consolidation. That's all I'm saying. Um, looking at high-grade copper. High-grade copper was looking lousy the other day. It's looking even worse today. Uh, this is not something to ignore. 4.30 down 0.10. This is this is something that I'm taking seriously. Now, uh, am I going to be able to do this? A bunch of things are going on right now. Yeah, oh, ES. Oh, oh, there it is. So I drew in the left side, right side price temp match of the 10 minute uh, chart of the Q, of the um, NQU. This is the um, right here. It's a September contract. And it's had a sudden dive to the downside. So now I need to just go back because I, I want I don't want to skip on what I'm talking about because you've got the tiger dollars you want to know kind of what I'm doing in my newsletter and what I'm looking at, what's coming up for the next couple of many weeks. And I'm looking at certain sectors and I'm saying there's a rotation going on. The fact that the Dow has been able to climb, let me just do this one at a time, climb higher and as a solo instrument, just 30 stocks, but the most, some of the most important stocks in the spectrum of the U.S. economy that's why it's doing so well. It's really important. You cannot get crashes when you've got one or two sectors, especially if they've turned into pretty important sectors holding very well. And that's why I'm talking about this as a rotational correction. And if you're looking at the QQQ, that has a lot of the semiconductors in it. It has Microsoft. Microsoft it should be dragging the Dow down, and it's not. That's how powerful the Dow is. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying a digestive phase is unfolding. When you have places to go to, and I needed yesterday and today to confirm for me that the down the S and the uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, are not showing just momentary a rotation in a bifurcated market. If they did not follow through, if the Dow didn't follow through sharply without a three to four hundred point decline yesterday after the seven hundred point all time high move to the upside, that says to me that this is more concerted. We've got leadership. And that leadership says within the context of rotation, as long as you've got rotation, follow the leaders. And that says to me it's giving us a focal point on what to look for without saying, where's the nearest window? I'm diving out. I can't take this. This is just too much. The market is saying, we've got a little cogency there. We've got, we've got things that we're looking at that are much, much more important than they have been before, and they're in focus to the positive side. So I'm saying to you, if you're able to identify, for instance, uh, oh, look, even now, uh, we've got the XLE, which technically... Um, 
after everything that's happened, you should have seen oil screaming to the upside, but it hasn't done that. But what oil has done, and the XL is the energy sector, it's held extremely well. It hasn't broken the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone of the weekly chart. It'll do that when it trades for a week or two in the 83 to 85 area, 83.50 to 85 area, and that's important. At this particular point, it is just holding very well. Wait a minute. If you're looking at energy, why wouldn't ExxonMobil uh, be rallying? Because it's always participated in most of the bull market phases. Well, it wasn't, but now it is. It looks very much like the XLE chart. Look, it broke out, and it's going towards that left side high. So finally, you've got ExxonMobil, even though it's an, almost at an all-time high at 118. The last high was 123, was it? Uh, there it is. The last high was back in April at 120. Yeah, 123.75. So that's really important. A dividend stock and an energy stock, oil stock, up near all-time highs. That is important. So I'm just saying to you, don't get all panicky. Don't think this is the end of the world. We are rotating. And those rotating leaders, even if there's a big pullback, should still remain as leaders in the, for the next few weeks. That's how I'm looking at it. I'll have to change my mind if the uh, Dow drops 1,500 points over the next two, three weeks. And I'm just saying, could happen. I'm just telling you what would change my mind. Okay. Now, um, so what I want you to do the next... Oh, let's go back. So the GDX, this is the gold miners. The gold miners is trading down 8 cents at 38.35 it went to a leg seat, could be a peak seat today. I think there's one more nominal high, probably under 40. And then, as I say, I think gold starts to digest the gains. I want you to go to the TLT. This is very important. The TLT <clears throat> is stuck. Look, inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart uh, at 93.92, down 27 cents. Even if it goes to a leg D above the uh, high that was made, Yesterday, well, you, well, if it does it today, that continues leg C, but it looks more likely it'll have to be the next day or Monday above 94.40. If it goes to 94.41, and there is a peak C today, and then on Friday or Monday, it goes that. That's the key. But what is it doing is we test the previous high of the 14th of June. If you really want to see bond yields go down, eh, that's a question, I'm especially if Trump does get in, and that's and, and the tax creates a little bit of inflation again. Hmm, we'll have to see what happens. Anyway, that's months ago. Let me tell you, do you think that this all settles right now? <laughs> I got news for you. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, so the digestive phase that I thought would occur today in the Dow and the IWM is still not quite unfolding, but I think it should pull back a little bit. But those are still the leadership stocks. I just want to show you this because I, I did this with John earlier on. We were looking at the, the 200 period moving average. But I also want to show you, here's the orange line in the five-minute chart. It went to a peak D in the Chapman Wave peak Ds, but your objective is it could go higher, but D is your objective. You did it once, pulled back, made an arch formation, beautiful left side, right side price time match. I didn't draw that in. It was just a visual one. This one I did draw in. It went to an F. And then over the 200 period moving average, and then came back under it. I had no choice because of the technicals that were deteriorating, to and the, the 914 went pink to go to a down arrow. But then there was a s sudden spike to the upside. That is what I call a right arm extension. It looks like you know the little character that you got when your right arm is raised. Um, in in the old days, you say, "Teacher, may we leave the room." Okay. Um, in the meantime, back at the ranch, it went to this rogue wave, uh, this right shoulder. It looks like a rogue wave, but this is a right shoulder extension failure at a peak F. And then it pulled back very sharply. And now it's tumbling. But wait a minute. Remember, John, we, uh, uh, we were talking about the importance of the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart. Look at this 10 minute chart went very close and touched the line, that 200 period moving average at that peak D. Then it pulled back. Most importantly, once you touch that line, it becomes like a magnet. And look, the next peak D went right to the line, pull back a little bit, and then doing one more peak to the upside. There I put a down arrow because, and then the nine period moving average crossed negative, and look where we are. We're right on uh, the uh, 5624 level. And that's what I was saying that there's, there's some kind of a digestive phase that's going to be going on as the Dow and the IWM do have a little bit of a pullback. I don't know if the day's young, but that's what I'm anticipating. But we're going to see whether or not the semiconductors, I haven't even spoken about them, the semiconductors are able, look, big red candle, down $1.75 at 252 Now, we want to, we just missed the, uh, the, the short side yesterday, and today we put it in and oh, missed it again. That's a pity. So we've gone from 283.07, the all-time high, with the right. This, this is a cup formation where the right side high had very poor technicals, except for the on-balance volume, which went very overboard and then pulled back. And now we're down very sharply, and we're underneath the 255.66 low of the end of May. Uh, sorry, end of June. And that's a big negative. And that says there's a really good chance that the weekly chart is making a peak D and that we should be pulling back. And I'd said my, my target on the SMHs will be the 239 to 232 area. Um, and it just, I'm, I'm not sure yet on time, but time says that it could occur in July, uh, maybe the first week of August. And that's, I'm staying with that uh, as it stands right now. That's kind of the way we're looking at it. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at 
and that's really important is the VIX index. So coming off a high, all-time high, I don't like to see the VIX have just one sudden swoop to the upside, a rocket ship move, because that's just, ah, too much too soon. But look at the move. It's this cup formation. We've gone above the left side, right side price time match. Look right here. If we go from there to there, and then we go click, and we'll say, was that taken out? And the answer is obvious. You can see it right. Oops. Uh, new. So that actually is green right there. And this actually is red or pink in this case. Pink. There's your midpoint. And lo and behold, it's one bar late and it went right to the high of the VIX that was made. And that was at 1487 on the 31st of May. Uh, yesterday we went to 14... 88 and today we've gone to 1497 we're at 1487 and that's just telling me that the assessment that I've been making for a couple of weeks now that we're about to see uh, consolidation unfold in the big leaders that's going to be the QQQ the SMHs the S&P is in the middle it'll it'll follow but it isn't quite the same and that one of the big clues that I've had is Microsoft. That's been the leader to the upside on October the 31st. We went long at 338, round number actually. Um, and um, the anticipation was that this pattern, I'm not going to go through it again, the stalk leg formation would unfold and that the beak would pull wherever it is that it turns around, it's going to come back and test the 433 to 431 area. And we'll see if that's going to unfold. And that leadership should continue, but a little bit more restrained. And now we have to wait. And we want to add to our uh, IWM. We took, we've took taken two little bits off for nice profits. But we want to add back a bigger chunk to our initial position, which is down the 203s. And where is it trading right now? 221 hit 226, I believe. And we'll have patience because I think that money that's flowed into those areas won't just come out. Now, they waited long enough, so it, it'll be dips that'll be bought. That's my anticipation. Could be wrong. What am I missing out here? Crude oil. I was asked yesterday about crude oil, and I said it's stuck. It has not been able to break above the um, inside track repellent zone. You remember I take two parallel lines, very narrow little lines, like the, um, just over a sixteenth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch, and I uh, could be less, and I try to uh, adapt to, let me just get rid of this right now. There it is. I try to take the outer lines, outer, let me just get rid of that there, okay. I try to use the outer parts of the wick, if I can, I might have to use the body of a candle, but mostly I want at least two outer wicks and say that is my trend line. And that says within that context right there, look at the, uh, the repellent zone and look how prices keep coming back. At some point, and I think the nine period moving average being strong at this particular uh, moment in the weekly chart and positive, but not strong, but positive in the daily says there's a chance we at some point do get a, lot, a sudden pop and that pop depends on how it breaks into the 84 area. And if it does that on a weekly basis, that'll be the first time it's really popped its head above this declining diagonal trend line resistance. Okay, that's crude oil. Where's support? 78. It's at 80 right now, 80.63. The whole area of the 78 should be support. If it isn't, that's going to be a big problem. I'm going to look across here. That was on behalf of the 91 people watching and all the participants in the den. Thank you. Great answer. And thanks to the gentleman that asked the question. Oh, oh, thank you, Trader G. Uh, yes. And then Ben says, Dow Eiffel Tower. Um, you know, I, all right, because you've mentioned it, I need to talk about it. And I guess the other, the other segments and questions here, I'm going to do this. Uh, let me just, because I need to do it. Why? <sighs> let me do this. Right. 
I know it's what you get in a sit usually it's a single move A to the upside and then it comes all the way back down. It's like when the when there's an announcement at eight thirty, uh, some earnings or some uh, economic report, you get a sudden spike up and then it comes all the way back down. Well, that's called the Eiffel Tower. It looks like an uppercase A. One will be right back for the final section. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I just found out that Steve is under the weather. Steve, I hope you got, and if you're listening, but I hope you get better. I, I will do the next hour. There's a bunch that I'm going to do for myself, so I'll just do it uh, live. Um, and I needed to do it so it would, I'll be able to use that time judiciously because uh, I do want to uh, ke keep working at my uh, webinar coming up on Tuesday. I know pretty much what I want to do, uh, but it's it's sorting it out and this will help me. So there's been a really nice bounce uh, in the uh, one minute chart. Look at this going trying to get back to the 50, 55, oops, 56, 47, 200 period exponential moving average. Uh, I, I'm going to use this moment right now just to say um, in, in my webinar, this is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, this is for subscribers to my opening call. You can subscribe. You know, I've got this the tiger with the tiger dollars and, and money back guarantee. I mean, this is like a little bonus week you got. Um, so sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Uh, that's live July 23rd, 4 o'clock to 5.30 Eastern Time. Uh, that is on Tuesday. I forgot to put down. I always I hate it when people put a date and don't put the uh, the day. 
It's Tuesday, I should have said. Why did I not do that? Tuesday, July the 23rd at 4 to 5.30. Archive is included for all subscribers. You can look at it as many times as you want. Uh, will sector rotation see new groups rally? Can the out of favor big losers become winners using the critical 940 moving average crossover weekly time frames to gauge time lapses in other words you saw what i did in the weekly chart also you're going to be looking at the 200 period moving averages are they close are they getting close what what happens when it does that uh chap wave technical tools of importance i've already shown some live today <clears throat> and then live questions anytime you have a question i answer it immediately i like to answer questions as they come up because otherwise i'm going to forget and you're going to forget so um so that's basically it and i'm going to wrap up now but i'm going to come back for steve's whoops put that back again for steve's hour of course i can't do uh steve's uh, work if he does it beautifully himself but I will be back and we're going through and I've got a lot of questions that have come up and I'll deal with those. We also want to look at some